Hello everybody, welcome to the Purple Corner, which is Purple Pencil Project's chan YouTube channel, digital communities, and hopefully soon offline communities. I'm Prakriti Maniar, and today I have with me Anirudh Rathor, who has, uh, he was just telling me before we start this interview, he's done a bunch of things, he's been a history major, uh, then worked as a banker in equity, and now owns uh, two heritage hotels in Rajasthan. Um, so he's written a book uh, published by Penguin called Investing Decoded, uh, which honestly, like this year is my goal to be financially independent. So I'm definitely going to be reading it more in depth than I did for this interview. Uh, but Anirudh, thank you so much uh, for writing that book for people like us and uh, for being here today. Thank you, Prakriti, for inviting me here. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to this chat. And uh, hopefully, you know, uh, I can, you know, uh, bring out some points which will help your audience. Yes, and me. Honestly, this is selfishly just for me because I need to learn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my brother, my father, my family agrees that I'm done. You're done spending. Uh, right, so right. I want to start with kind of the history of your career, which is a lot to do with numbers, a lot to do with finance and decision making in that department. Uh, right, right, right. And then writing a book about investing, right? Uh, putting that knowledge together. Um, we were just talking, you and I, about the changing nature of the digital times, how it's easier to connect. Right. So I right. want to start with why the format of a book? Why not maybe say a class or like an, a master class or some sort of digital kind of uh, product? Right. Um, right. What was right. the idea behind writing this book as a book? Yes, yes. yes. No, so I'm so glad you asked me that because, uh, you know, uh, you know when, I, when I started writing the book, you know, just two days before or one day before, if you would have told me that, you know, one and a half year later or two year, two year later, you'll have a published book, I would have said you're joking. You see, it is the most spontaneous thing I've ever done in my life. And uh, like I said earlier, it was very impromptu for me also. Because, you know, I, I wrote it during the second wave of COVID. At that time, you know, what my situation was that both my, both my hotels were closed, right? Because for one and a half years, tourism had taken a big knock. And I had actually nothing to do at home, you know, for over a year. And, you know, I had this huge pent up energy inside me. And so I finally channelized it into writing a book. So I think, you know, my energy got used in a good way. And everything that came out of it was pure serendipity for me. Because, you know, I had, uh, for me, this whole process was an eye opener, you know. It was an eye opener for me also that I could actually, you know, go on and complete writing the book also. And like I told you before, I am actually a history student, right? And I, you know, realized very early in my life that, uh, you know, uh, besides, you know, just learning uh, various, you know, uh, courses, etc., that, you know, I had to upgrade my skills in some way or the other. And uh, so, you know, I came across, you know, during my earlier uh, stages of reading books on investing. So when I, when I would read them, they really opened up my eye. So, you know, this whole world of investing. This was like 15, 20 years back. And I thought, you know, that this can be an excellent parallel career for anybody. Anybody who's doing a job or anybody, you know, who's doing a business. Because there was, there, it is such a vast area. And there is, there, and you know, there is a lot of confusion with a lot of people regarding it. So I thought I must, you know, uh, deep dive into it, learn a bit myself. And, you know, try and, you know, master the subject. So that's how I got going, you know, into uh, investing myself. And, you know, as you keep doing it, you get more and more experience and, you know, you get more and more comfortable with it also. And uh, luckily for me, you know, everything fell in place and uh, it turned out just perfect for me. You like, uh, at least from what I was understanding, I've read this also somewhere that you start investing much later or you learned about investing much later. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. So what used to happen, Prakriti, is, you know, when I, I finally did my MBA between 1995 to 1998, you know, that was the time when I did it. And that time I used to notice, you know, that, you know, uh, in where the stock markets in India all of a sudden become, you know, very, you know, popular, you know, compared to what it was till the 80s. But when I used to go to the bookstores in uh, my city, I used to find there are no books which can explain to me the stock markets, right? And uh, we were not even taught the subject when we were doing our MBA also. What is investing? What are the stock markets? What is equity and all? These things are not taught in uh, most business schools, and uh, so I used to what so I used to actually go to Delhi, 
and there go to the bookstores over there and buy books from there and come back to Jaipur where I live. Right. So that's how, you know, I started learning it on my own. And, uh, and gradually, you know, once you start uh, reading a lot and, uh, you know, you start practicing it also, you get more and more comfortable with the whole theme. And that's how I started, you know, getting into it more and more. And uh, then I got into banking later on also, which helped me, you know, in clearing a lot of my concepts. And uh, there was a time when I used to actually sell, you know, equity products to our clients in the bank. So I used to, you know, it, it is very interesting, you know, because I realized that uh, everybody has the same concerns about equity investing, you know. People used to be equally confused about it. And so it was quite interesting to, you know, guide them and, you know, put them onto a path where, you know, they can make use of this investing area. So what are some of these starter concerns and if like, you know, specific starter concerns that you've seen very commonly across uh, people you've met and interacted with and maybe even you had at the beginning of your investing journey right, that you've right, tried right. to solve or not solve so much but answer in the book right right so basically the first thing that you know uh, happens is when you come across people is they have a you know a fear psychosis regarding equity you know they think that if they're going to invest they're going to lose money <laughs> that is the first thing so we all have something you know we all have a uh, you know uh, you know, hardwired, hardwired bias called, you know, loss aversion, you know, so it's there in all of us. Nobody wants to lose any money, right? So naturally they'll think 10 times when you are a beginner before actually putting any money into the markets, right? So uh, it's a bit, you know, uh, stock markets is a bit about, you know, it's more about, a, you know, stock markets challenge you in the mental side more, you know, than the analysis size. So you can be a very good analyst, but you still may not be a very good uh, equity investor because you are unable to take the decision to make these investments, right? So people have to overcome their, you know, uh, mental challenges before they become good investors. So that was one common theme which I used to see that most people used to see it as an obstacle in, you know, freely going into the markets. But what happens is once you start uh, investing in a little way and you start seeing some decent results, then more and more confidence comes into the investor. And then they start taking a larger bets into the equity market. And uh, so, you know, I, this same question I'd been asked a bit earlier also. So I, I you know, always, uh, I've written in the book also that we have, you know, various biases. And uh, one of the most common biases we all have is something called a confirmation bias, right? We all have it in different degrees. So what happens is that we all have preconceived notions of many things. For example, you already have a preconceived notion that equity markets are risky, right? So even if I present to you certain facts and data that shows you that it is not that risky, you will still disagree with me, right? So, so the main thing is that, you know, uh, people have to, you know, overcome these uh, mental barriers. And uh, so another example I'll give you, uh, when there is a sale in a department store, if you realize, we will all go and rush and buy things from there, correct? But if there is a sale in the equity markets, we will all cringe with fear, right? We will we 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 think that you know if we get into the market now, the market is going to go even more lower, and we're going to keep on losing money. So it's a huge emotional thing, and people have to learn to you know overcome that. So once you can do that, then only you can become a very good investor in these markets. That's like the emo that's like bang on, right? Like that's the, that taking yeah. that first step, that fear is very real. And somehow right. it's easier to spend 300 on like a coffee knowing it's just going to go in your stomach in five minutes. But 300 yeah. in investing just feels a much larger amount, like psychologically. Exactly, exactly. Which, completely right. Uh, but also like some of the technical things, right? Um, uh, like small things research sites apps to use so what are those things that you use that you've probably recommended or would recommend to uh, people who start out starting out investing right some of the go to uh, i right, guess right. okay here's where i do my research or i use this app because it's really friendly and it helps me keep right, track right, of my investments right, right, etc right, right. correct 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 you know so uh, prakriti the first thing that people have to realize is that uh, equity investing, you know, you should not just look at it as something that you buy a stock 
at a low price and sell at a high price or you know people are or one should you know approach it in terms of trying to make a quick gain right you will only do well in it if you look at you know uh, buying shares uh, from the point of view of, of being a part owner of a business right see whenever you are buying a share you actually become a part owner of a business right it becomes an asset for you and you know all these companies have a life cycle right so for example you invest in a share today right that company may continue to keep doing well for the next 30 40 50 years so you cannot expect that all the returns will come in one or two years so people have to see it as a partner to the future you know whenever uh, they invest in a company that you know the, this is a company which uh, i have now invested in and now you know i will uh, follow the path of its entire life cycle and be a part of it for as long as the company is doing well so people have to look at it from that point of view right and companies also you know the management of companies the owners they take decisions over you know uh, decades and decades you know and that's when the best you know uh, outcome for these companies also come out you know they come up with new products they market those products they you know grow uh, they, they sell these products throughout the country even abroad and once they have achieved that then the then the stock price automatically follows the profitability that these companies have achieved so you know you have to tag along with them for you know quite some time and obviously those companies should have good corporate governance and things like that and uh, so i think it's a it's a very you know uh, unique way to look at uh, you know investing and not just keep that you know we put in money now we made some money and let us come out and let's start doing something else you now so you have to approach it from a completely different angle then only people will you know really succeed and make the best use of this uh, asset class this yeah i think this I, this idea of a you're going to be a part owner of a company and b you have to look and like research your companies based on how well they're doing how much like long term right. longevity you see in them i think that's really important right. to remember because yeah. when you're buying a product it's a you know i think our buying mentality consumer mentality uh a buying mentality way equated with our consumer mentality where you buy right. something and use it but this is the yeah. opposite you're buying true. something and true. letting it stay for as long true. as you can true. for as true. you know as much profit as you can so that's exactly. a thing really interesting point um i want to shift gears because i'm always yeah. interested with it's also actually january is this month of good starts that we are celebrating so right. tell you you know we are yes. talking more about debut writers and the journey of right. writing uh Correct. you did mention you had time on your hands but especially Correct. with subjects where you know a lot in your head and in practice right. about things to structure right. it right. in a way that you know it right. reads well and seamlessly to your reader yeah. uh exactly. the typical process requires so much notes taking research right. you know kind right. of right. um Uh, creating that structure and outline uh, right, and right, if right. you're not writing as a day to day practice it can also be a little bit of a muscle exercise in yes, writing it yes, down yes. so can Absolutely. you talk to us a little bit about yeah. this, how you went through this process yeah yeah so i am a little bit of a different writer you know <laughs> i you know you see what i did was uh, when i started the book i took each day as it comes first of all right so on the first day i had not decided what i'll be you know what will be my entire outline for the book let's say over the next 3 4 months what i would write so i used to take each day at a time and on that very day i used to decide that today okay look i have to write a chapter on this topic right in investing second day i would decide i have to write a write a you know chapter on the next topic right and if the topic was a bit large i would take two three days to write it so i took each day as it comes and you know once you start writing i think you know you start get, gaining that momentum right and uh, so as as i con- kept on continuing month after month i realized that you know uh, i just had the right you know uh, entire momentum going with me and i just kept continuing till the day i finished the book right till the first you know part of the manuscript was uh, ready and okay later on of course then i did decide that you know which chapter should come before which chapter and you know what should be the right flow for the entire book but i took it uh, each day as it comes and i was not looking too far ahead that you know like uh, 15 days from now what is the topic that i'm going to be writing because because these markets are very vast and there is so much to actually write in it 
that I'm sure that I must have, you know, I've tried to cover as much as I can, but later on, once the book is ready and, you know, a year, half a year passes, then you do realize that there is so much more that, that also you could have written also. So it's a very, finance and investing is a huge topic. And there is endless amount of things that you can write. But, uh, you know, but after, let's say, 100 days, I thought that I had a reasonable, decent manuscript. And so then I concentrated on improving the manuscript rather than, you know, keep on writing more and more. So that became my goal then after that. So that's how I took it. You know, so every day was a new day for me. And uh, so, the, yes, you're right. There are a lot of authors who already planned the whole book from before. That, look, this is each chapter, you know, the, you know, this is how the various parts of the book will be. But it was not like that for me. I just kept writing till I finished it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, typically with um, like nonfiction informative books, uh, outline yeah. tends to precede writing, but I think you did right, the smarter right. thing because it's so easy to get overwhelmed right. when you exactly. think too, too far ahead. Exactly. Exactly. It's so easy to be and like, oh my God, so much to cover. How will I do it? Yeah, and one thing, Prakriti, I think I was very lucky is that, you know, I never had a writer's block in between. There are a lot of writers sometimes do get. <laughs> so, you know, I just, uh, it just, I just kept on going till I actually had the book ready. And, That's really uh, cool. And, and um, you see, I had a lot of time with myself. My my mind was not diverted during that time. Mm. Like I told you, my businesses were closed. Yeah. Right? So the whole day was free. So I could yeah. do a little bit of research in the morning and write about that in the evening. Yeah. So it's not like today if I have to write up with my with my current status where like my businesses are running and I'm doing five other things, you know, parallelly, then it would be, then I would have to actually take out time yeah so, and be far more disciplined yeah to be able to write it every day and i may miss and i may miss certain days also if i have to write now the same true. Book again true true you know, and it would have taken much more longer also it would have yeah. taken probably two three times longer to complete it if i had Fair to do enough. the same thing again now yeah so i think Fair i enough. was a product of the time i think it was i was a product of the time and uh it and covid became a it became a positive thing for me finally yeah so yeah I, I tried to use that uh, period to uh, bring out something which became positive for me in the end. Yeah, no, that's a really, you know, to have that kind of uh, space and create that for yourself. I think that's really amazing. But also about, uh, I'm curious about like the publishing journey. I'm, I'm only right, going to take right, an right. make an assumption that this might be all very yeah. new for you. The publishing world, yeah, yeah. Uh, the marketing, Absolutely. even stuff like Absolutely. getting publicity. Yeah, yeah. So how, and I know Absolutely. you're continu- you're doing it even today. So how are you navigating yeah. that? Do you yes, have someone yes, who's yes, helping yes. you, etc.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, we have a, a fantastic uh, organization whom I'm involved in for marketing the book called Market My Book. Okay. Uh, it is spearheaded by Lipika Bhushan. She's doing a great yeah. job. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but you know, the, coming to the first part of your of this uh, question, once I had finished the book, I had no clue at all how it gets published. Just you know, get that another way. thing which worked for me, another thing, Prakriti, which I think worked for me is I was never thinking about those things when I was writing the book. Oh, how will it get published? Who will yeah. publish it? Who am I supposed to approach? Those things were not at all in my mind. Yeah. And uh, so, in a way, it was good because I. I was not, uh, you know, I was not too worried about the result after mm. writing the book. I was just yeah. mainly focused on the content of the book. Yeah. So that also, I think, uh, worked for me in the right way. And once I finished uh, writing it and I had the manuscript ready, only then I started thinking about it. And so I asked one of my friends, he's a writer, he's one of my classmates. So I called him up and I asked him, look, how do you publish a book and all? So he was a very, very, very helpful to me. And uh, so he immediately put me on to Penguin Random House, right? And he told me uh, that, you know, just forward your manuscript to them and let's see what happens after that. So they were the only publisher whom I, you know, forwarded my, you know, manuscript to. So, (laughs) and luckily it just worked out just fine. And uh, so uh, sometimes, you know, not thinking too much of the result helps you out, you know. And uh, so you are just operating with a free mind. And uh, trying to make the best of whatever, you know, comes in front of you. I think that's a writer's tip that all of us <laughs> can really help, uh, yeah. you know, try and internalize as much as possible. I'm going to shift to the lighthearted thing. Are you a reader yourself? I'm, I see a lot of books yeah. in the background. 
um are you a reader yourself uh, have you did you grow up right. reading a lot of books and stories etc okay okay yeah yeah so you know yeah, you just uh, at the back you know i have my own personal library over here which nice. i you know uh, during covid time i got it ready and but you know there are a lot of books here which i still have to read okay Not everything <laughs> i've read over there. <laughs> so i want to i want to books over here on the left pause you yeah. that so you know we are as i don't know about right. you but we are very always worried okay you know we are buying more books than we are reading and i read this quote recently right right where treat your bookshelf yes. like you treat your wine cellar uh, store it till you find the right wow. occasion for the right yes. book so you are in the right mood to read the right no, book yeah yeah i agree with you and, completely and i felt thing. I felt and, uh, so good, somewhere on Instagram. Yeah, so I felt yeah, so yeah. good about it. I'm like, you know what? I don't feel yeah, guilty. Yeah. I can always buy a book and then read it when the time is yeah, right yeah. for it. Um, but yeah, please continue. I didn't exactly. mean to cut you, but I had exactly. to like talk about this. I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I agree completely. And each book is like a treasure. Yes. Know? And uh, once you go through it, it's like completing a treasure hunt. Also, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I like, you know, I like reading. Uh, I mainly read nonfiction. Right. Okay. and uh, so uh, in the over the last you know i was uh, last 10 15 years i was biased towards reading investing books mainly okay fair enough <laughs> so fair enough yes that was my main interest but then i read quite a lot of them over 10 years and i think i read uh, just about all of them whichever <laughs> whichever were available i'm curious and, uh, yeah but please now, continue ha uh-huh. but now prakriti i spend a lot of time besides just uh, reading books i also spend a lot of time going through you know youtube channels like yours you know on the on on social media etc because i find that is also very informative and uh, so and you know you get a, you get some excellent content on youtube also and there are a lot of you know uh, good speakers writers etc who come on these channels and they give fantastic information so after the after going through so much of the, uh, media a little bit of you know uh, the old fashion reading for me has reduced a bit so now i'm using all forms of you know uh, options of going through information and that is that has to be less villainized i feel that we are so worried about that we are not reading books enough that we forget how much more we are reading in different formats uh, right right yeah, so yeah. for Indeed, sure that information over time yeah but did you grow up reading like novels by you know i don't know um like stories no, stories I, did I you have that till the, till the age of let's say 12 13 i was only reading comics <laughs> that's amazing then, i love and that and then after that after that yes you know uh, during my later teen years i started reading fiction books right and uh, once i you know once i finished college and you know got into post graduation and all then the non fiction part started so it's all these that the entire journey of reading but you know i would not say that i'm a very heavy reader i'm not like that because i read my books very slowly you know i come across a lot of people who say in every month they read 10 books or things like that you know for me to read a book takes probably 2 months okay because i like to you know catch the entire gist of the book yeah. and sometimes i reread the chapters also quite same, a few times same. same so i'm a bit of a slow reader i'm not a very quick fast reader who can you know just consume a lot of information very quickly fair enough fair i was just more than anything curious and i want to leave yeah, i yeah. think this is this is kind of covered a lot but i want to leave because it's a book on investing and right. i want to ask you this very fun question that has there been a time when you made this unnecessary very expensive spend when you should have in, like you knew in your logical brain that you should have invested because we talk about money and the emotional aspect of spending and uh, investing right, right, i want right, to know right, right. is there a time in your life when you were like oh i should have invested but you know what today i will spend this have there been moments and like do you sometimes think oh i should have right. invested more maybe not spent on this thing that thing right right no uh, uh, that's a very fair question and uh, you're absolutely right you know i don't treat uh, money as only something to be accumulated right that is just one part of you know uh, earning money and you know investing it that is just one part but i also do spend and uh, you know and so uh, that's not just me you know my wife and i have two grown, i have one grown up son and one still as a small boy and so we we do a lot of spending and uh, we just you know uh, there spending also has its intangible you know benefits right 
So, you know, you want to improve the quality of your life. You want to enjoy a bit in your life. So you have to spend. You can't just keep, you know, uh, accumulating all that money and putting it into some kind of safety deposit box. It doesn't work like that with me. So I enjoy that part also very much. Yeah. No, and this is like a good reminder in that. And I must share with you, I must share with you, I'm in a business where you have to spend. <laughs> because yes. if you cannot create a good product, you know, something which attracts people, then they will not come to these hotels, right? So I have to spend far more than what, you know, I plan out to be. It, you know, the, 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 the expense budget, you know, we far, you know, outperform the in, investing budget than we actually initially planned out for. We always overshoot it. This is a good reminder, I think, that some like invest, yeah. investing helps because then you can make those spends. <laughs> you know, uh, correct, correct, it's, correct, it's really yeah. to be able to make those spends without being guilty or without being short, uh, feeling like yes, you're yes. depleting wealth that you should invest. Right, but right, uh, I right. think this has been <laughs> such a wonderful chat. I love getting to know like first time authors' journeys. Um, and it's been such right. a pleasure talking to you. I know that, you know, we were discussing how you no, and I would have never otherwise to spoken to each other. But this is a great uh, right. reason and platform that we can. So thank you so much, Anil. No, no, thank you for inviting me. And uh, I had a great time, you know, sharing all this information with your audience. <laughs> Uh, to everybody else who's watching, all links, the links of his book, um, his bio, right. etc., are in the details. So please check it out. And uh, yeah, stay tuned right. for more. Bye bye. Thank you so much.